Well, good evening everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel, Keyboard Skills Pro. My name's Tom and it's a great pleasure to have your company um, here this evening. Uh, so tonight we are having um, our very first live um, sort of organ keyboard workshop um, in which I'm going to show you um, some, some hints and tips and ideas um, using my, uh, my keyboard here. In my studio, so this will be great if you've got a you know a Lowry organ, a Verzi organ, a, a home organ of some description, or, or maybe an arranger keyboard um, like this. Um, it'll do very well. So tonight we are using um, we've got the cameras on, we've got um, uh, lots of things like that, um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, very very exciting um, to be doing this uh, this kind of stuff. So um, anyway, so for starters, we have got. Um, um, we're going to be doing um, some things with the right hands. Um, we're going to be doing some things with chords. We're going to look at some registrations and lots of other things uh, like that. So hopefully you will be enjoying it. Oh, hello everyone. Sorry there, we had a little drop out of the connection there, so hopefully that's uh, still working. <laughs> um, we're trying lots of different things tonight, and uh, we've got all this new equipment, and I'm learning how to use it myself. Um, so it's interesting when it when it doesn't work. But uh, anyway, so hopefully we'll be able to um, um, carry on as we were before. But as I say, tonight's just a bit of fun uh, with regards to, you know, lots of different things, um, and uh, hopefully some hints and tips to, uh, you know, get you into... Uh, get you into your playing um, of your favourite Christmas songs. Because of course it is the thing, every time we start um, playing at Christmas time, we do tend to um, 
you know, play the same sort of songs and things like that. So I thought in this uh, particular session we would take you through a few hints and tips and a few ideas. So if you have got a Christmas book handy, um, it would be nice to, um, to have that to hand because we're going to talk about a few songs and a few ideas um, on, the, uh, on the keyboard and the organ. So, um, so if the stream, for some whatever reason, does drop out, um, just just stay there, and we'll try and get it back going. I think um, there's just you know things with the internet, uh, the, the wind and the cold and the rain doesn't help. But anyway, we'll uh, we'll stop prattling on and uh, and crack on. So first of all, we're going to take a look at how to do some enhancements to your melody. Now, the thing of a melody is um, is that it is in a lot of cases with songs designed for singers. So. The, um, the thing of actually improving a melody is you want to use more fingers on your right hand. Now, organs and keyboards have these wonderful um, automatic harmonies, which are really, really good, and they add some lovely um, extra notes to our right hand. But unfortunately, what they also do is make us a little bit lazy, because we don't get into actually playing um, our own harmonies and things like that. So, um, so you know, we're going to take a look now at adding some simple single notes to the one note that you're already playing. So, for example, if we were playing, um, let's say, White Christmas, we might have some piano and strings. Okay. Something a little bit like that. And, of course, we all know uh, this quintessential song. Oh, what a lovely piece, isn't that nice? So the first thing we're going to have a go at is adding an extra note to the melody. So this is going to be playing in thirds, okay? Um, just before we go any further, folks, uh, one or two folks have joined us this evening. We've got uh, Steve. Uh, good evening, Steve, from... Um, let's see, I put the uh, put my mug back on the screen for a moment. <laughs> so we've got we've got Edward up in um, a cold Ribble Valley. Yes, it is very cold tonight, um, Edward. It's very cold and wet here, um, but no uh, no frost as of yet. Uh, we've got um, uh, he's, he also sends Edward his very best wishes. Hopes all goes well with tonight's performance. So do I. Um, it's all to do with streams and internet connections and buffering and things like that. Um, Steve, hello, Steve. Uh, Steve's in uh, Cambridgeshire. Good evening, Steve. Lovely to see. Uh, Steve and Pat as well. Uh, ben Fuller, good evening Ben, lovely to have you with us. Trevor Bunce, hello Trevor, nice to hear from you. Um, Katrina, Kate Hopkins, Katrina's one of my keyboard students, um, unfortunately not able to come at the moment for lessons here at the studio because of Covid, but uh, um, keeping in touch. Alan from um, uh, Alan, very cold and wet in Leeds. Do you know, Alan, it's always cold and wet in Leeds for Alan, it's something there. Alan Fuller in the US, um, hey Alan, lovely to see you. Alan Robinson, hey. And, uh, oh, Steve's on, hello Steve, up in um, Scotland, uh, one of my online organ students. So I'm gonna put my um, iPad back so I can uh, talk to you all as we go. Anyway, so, playing in third. So there's the melody. Okay, now the thing of White Christmas is that works really well if you want to add thirds. So what we simply do is we're playing in the key of C, and what we've got to do is we simply take our first melody note, which is of course an E. Now what we do is we then count down from the E is our first key, and then we do another one, two, and three. So watch what happens, look, if you play it in twos, right next to each other. Dear, don't worry now. In case you're wondering, oh, Tom's been drinking. No, I haven't. That's called playing in seconds. Didn't sound very nice at all, did it? No, it did not. So maybe avoid that one, playing the note right next door to the, the melody note, one below. Look. So we're going to go an extra one. One, two. So the C, the middle C, sits underneath here, and this creates a gap of, a musical gap of a third. Okay, one, two, three. And so when we play now in thirds, I'm just going to use two fingers, same for you, um, just to illustrate this. Obviously, don't play like this because it's very untidy, but this will just give you an idea of how the thirds will sound. So watch this. So here's the melody on the top, and here's the harmony note, and it's always just keeping this same distance all the way through. A little playing exercise, just to get used to it, is going C and E, 
and then uh, D and F, E and G, and then up and down like that. Notice that you can use the fingers in pairs, look. So it's one and three, thumb and middle, two and four, and three and five. And what you have to do, you have to get used to playing them in that kind of style. Okay, so what's happening there is this. And doesn't that sound lovely? Now, uh, we can do that with automatic harmony, but the problem with automatic harmony is it's on all the time. And, uh, you know, the, the, the famous AOC that we have on these lovely Lowry organs, that, that sounds beautiful, but it's always on. So you either have it off or you have it on. Whereas if you start to explore your own harmonies, you can choose when you add them in. So now let's have a listen to White Christmas look. So we're going E with C. And then, of course, what does the melody do? The melody goes up to F. So the bottom note comes with it. So you've just got to keep this distance between the two as you're going along. So let's just play uh, one short verse um, with um, single notes, and then I'll repeat that phrase by putting the thirds in. Here we go. round again with the thirds. Okay, so did you see how nice that sounded? Now, you can do thirds in any song you like, okay? Any song you like. You can do it in um, Jingle Bells, for example. So if I play Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells starts on an E, so again, I put my C underneath, look. And we get a nice sound like that. So very, very pleasant, look. Now, I talked about the thing of actually doing it occasionally in the piece. So if we go back to White Christmas, we may not want to do the thirds all the way through. So take a listen as I go a little further this time in the song, and uh, let's uh, take um, the thirds out after the first section, as it were. So something like this. So single melody there. Now put the thirds in, look at this, watch. Okay, now I'll go back to single melody. And then we'll go back to the thirds. Okay, so you get the idea. So we're, we're, we're going in and out there with single melodies and, excuse me, pairs, pairs of notes, okay. So very effective, and that is what's called in the trade as playing in thirds. Oh, one or two more folks have joined us. We've got, oh, Jeremy, dear Jeremy, Jeremy Munns, Merry Christmas, looking very festive. Yes, I've got my, my <laughs> I must tell you, this, my wife is not a fan of tinsel. Um, so, um, so I'm not allowed to have any tinsel in the house. Well, we have some on the tree, but so I've been banished to my studio um, so I can hang a bit of tinsel in here. Um, so uh, Jeremy, I used to teach many years ago. So uh, Jeremy, lovely to see you from you. Uh, Janae Chapel, Merry Christmas. Thank you, Janae. And Michael says, hi, Tom. I don't think it is snowing yet. No, we, we did have a bit of snow the other day, though, Michael. Um, excuse me. So um, anyway, so I hope it's all streaming OK and the sound is good. I'm sure you'll let me know if there's any any problems, but um, uh, we're using the computer. Um, I've got my new uh, Blackmagic Design ATM Mini Pro Mixer, which lets me do all these cool um, changing of videos. In fact, I can have up to four cameras at a time. I can do picture in picture like this. So you can see me in the corner there and uh, lots of other things as well. We're also using a little uh, mixer desk to mix the sound and that all streams into the computer. So hopefully the live streams, these kind of live lessons, will be starting to do these as we go along. 
um, and uh, make uh, just make things a little bit more interesting for you folks. But as, again, thank you very much for, for joining me this evening. So anyway, that's called playing in thirds. Now, what you can also do with a third is you can turn the notes the other way round. So what I mean by that is, let's say we were playing um, the the second part of that white Christmas melody, the one that goes da 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 da. With every Christmas card I write, that's why I play and don't sing. Um, but what what we could do there? Look, if I walk up in thirds, look like this. And do you know why I've picked White Christmas? Because it's in the key of C. There are no black notes to worry about in this example. Okay, so what I can do is if I open the gap up, so I go from a three now to a sixth, okay, so this is six, okay. So what I need to do this time is I still need to keep my melody note at the top, A, and then I count down one, two, three, four, five keys. But in fact, that's a musical gap of a six, because you see, when you start counting, you have to start on the note you're actually playing. Okay, and these gaps in music, we call them intervals, and it's the distance between one tone and either the one that is above it or the one that's below it. How many notes generally sit underneath the melody? Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so let me play White Christmas. I'm going to put, instead of putting the third underneath like this, I'm going to put the third on the top. Now try and hear the melody. That was almost impossible to hear the tune, wasn't it? It sounded a bit like White Christmas, but it wasn't very clear. So that you always keep the melody on the top and the harmonizing notes, the coloring notes, they always go underneath. So this is a third, look. One, two, three, let's count down. One, melody note, one, two, three, four, five, six. So C, look. And what the, the six is, it, it's kind of the, um, the cousin of the um, of the third, it, it's a it's a different flavour, different sound, but it has a very enjoyable, colourful tone, and and it kind of makes the harmony sound a bit more spacious and open. So this is playing in sixes, but again, all you do is just keep the same distance as you go up and down, like this. And you do it with one hand, and what you do is you just sort of slowly open your hand up and just let the thumb walk up, almost like a crab sidestepping, here we go. Etc, so very nice. So there you go, so playing in thirds and playing in gaps of sixes, adding your own harmony to a melody. Okay, very nice to do, lovely way of enhancing. Um, let me show you that now with a different piece. Uh, what if we did um, Silent Night? Okay, now Silent Night again, very close melody. Da, 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 da. Doesn't jump around all over the place. That's why White Christmas works so well. So playing in thirds and sixes is fine, um, but it does work very well with repeating notes and also um, melodies that go up and down in scales. Who have we got uh, some more messages from? We've got Barton Brass, looking good. Thank you, Barton Brass. I don't know your real name. Maybe it's Barton. Um, Barton is an American um, brand of um, theatre organ, everybody. They were made in Chicago, uh, the, my wife's hometown, Barton Theatre. I've never played a Barton um, or a, um, a Mola or a... Um, a page, any of the American organs, apart from Wurlitz, says, hope to do so one day in the US. Looking good from Indianapolis. And Keith's on. Hello, Keith, another one of my online students. Sounding great with some nice ideas. All the best, Keith and Susan from Essex. Thank you, Keith and Susan. So let's try Silent Night Look. There you see there, look, look at those thirds, look. Okay, so really nice. Now then, then stop, just go singles, look. Now go back to the thirds. Singles. 
So do you get the idea? It's kind of switching the harmony on and off, but you're doing it. It's kind of natural for humans to um, almost get curious. I mean, that's what I, I love teaching so much because people ask questions. They go, well, why, why, doesn't, why does that sound so nice? Or what does that sound like that? Or why does that look that way? And it's explaining the reasons why. So you can try that on, on your organs as well. Um, and those of you who are playing the organ, you know, if you've got some lovely theatre organ sounds, sound really, really good. Oh, hello, Barton Brass. Yes, Barton for Barton Organs. Um, my name is Jake. Hello, Jake from Indianapolis. Thank you so much for being on. I think in Indianapolis it's about ooh, 20 past, about 20 past two, I would say. I think they're about five or six hours behind us. So anyway, but there we go, folks. So playing in, um, playing in thirds and playing in sixes in the melody. And that works really well uh, in, in so many numbers. It really does. Um, let's take a little bit of Jingle Bells. I'll do an F major look. Singles. Doubles. Sixes. Okay, and of course that's a stepping stone to playing with full chords, and maybe we can talk about harmonising in another melody. Um, so yeah, so great fun, really is nice, and that's uh, that's because a lot of people go, oh, because <laughs> actually Katrina, who's watching, I remember when we we came to um, uh, a piece because Katrina uh, learnt to play the keyboard from scratch, and she's got a got a lovely Yamaha like my keyboard here, and. Um, uh, I remember the first lesson we came to, I think it was about, oh, I don't know, about nine, ten months in, and we had this song which had two notes in it. She was like, oh my God, two notes? No one can live at that speed. And she now plays three notes. She plays holding notes and separate melodies, and she's doing really well with that. And she's sitting there going, no, don't talk about me. <laughs> but no, she does really well. Oh, by the way, everybody, just before I completely and utterly forget, um, in the new year, um, I'm going to be uploading a video. Uh, it's going to actually going out just before Christmas. I'm going to be hosting an online virtual student concert featuring um, videos recorded by my students. And I've got quite a few have sent uh, videos in already. Um, and it's going to be a little online virtual concert of folks playing a favourite piece on the organ, the piano or the keyboard. So um, it's going to be um, a, a private video for the students and family members to begin with. But once the new year comes in, uh, I'm hoping to be sharing that as a, uh, a video here on my channel. If you're visiting the channel for the first time tonight, please do hit the subscribe button because it reminds you when I'm live and every time you get a, a new video. And if you want to be notified in your inbox, just, just click that little bell next to it. But please do subscribe. The more subscribers I get, um, the more I can grow my channel. If you really enjoy the content and you'd like to support what I'm doing, because we've got lots of equipment here, all of which I have to invest in from my business. If you really like what I do and would just like to support um, every month a little little contribution, you can join a website called patreon.com and you can search for my channel, Keyboard Skills Pro. It's kind of like a musical tip jar. So it starts from just one pound a month and it's a way of, if you like what I do and would just like to support, because you know we've got the, the mixer here alone was I don't know, several hundred pounds, so I've got to recoup that back somehow, which I do slow with monetarizing. But if you'd like to support me on Patreon.com, please do uh, uh, check that out. Patreon.com forward slash Keyboard Skills Pro. But you can also get access on there to a whole back catalogue of videos, a lot of material that isn't actually on the channel. There's also bonus PDFs, which you can get from the next level up. So there's lesson PDFs, and if you go to the gold or the platinum level, you can even choose a selection of videos that you personally would like me to record for the channel. So please do consider that. Thank you so very, very much. And uh, we've got another gentleman on, Harold from Germany, snowy Bavaria. And, oh, actually, do you know, Harold has very kindly, um, uh, along with Keith and uh, Steve up in Scotland, quite a few others have treated themselves to my new theatre organ book, Theatre Organ Originals. Just let me get the plug in. Um, and Harold recorded one of my pieces from the book. And let me tell you, he did a fantastic job of it. He really did. So if you search on YouTube for The Forgotten Cinema, excuse me, you will find this lovely video played by Harold 
in um, in Germany. And uh, again, lovely Christmas present. If you're looking for something to add to your organ collection, Theatre Organ Originals, five brand new pieces written in Theatre Organ style, and that's available via the website. We can also get piano books, organ CDs featuring some guy called Tom Horton, and lots of other things as well. Right, everybody, let's now crack on to another little thing I quite like. This is called what I call the holding note with walking down. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so, so what we're going to do is when we get to a, um, a part of the melody, you normally have a long note, okay, so... And we're going to put that in. So let me show you that what I did there. So we, we started, uh, we finished the phrase, He would even say it glows. But you know, it's very common in bands and orchestras to do like a little fin. What I mean by that is, is that when the singer has a little breath, or as the end of a phrase, the band has to fill in. So if you listen to Frank Sinatra's Come Fly With Me, it goes, come fly with me, come fly, come fly with me. And then the band goes, da 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 ba da 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 That's the little fill in. That's kind of what we're doing there. So what we do is we go, you can even say it. And then I come in on a third look, E, but I bring the C in, and then I walk down one, two, three, four. Now, you want to use a high finger for the holding note, and the other ones just play four crotchets. One, two, three, four. And that's called what I call the walk down filling. It's, it's walking down, but filling in at the same time. So, how can you use that? Uh, you can use it in many songs. So that was um, uh, Rudolph, so we could do it in Frosty the Snowman, for example. And let's get a nice sound. So one, one, two, three, four. So holding the G look, third below, one, two, three, four. And it's really nice. You have to hold the top note. Very effective with something like a saxophone like this. Because you get a good sound there from that particular um, instrument because it's going on or organ or strings or brass. So the, 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 the holding wall down. So essentially what that kind of looks like is on my scribbly notes there, you've got a long tied note, sorry, a long note like a semi brief So it's one, two, three, four, walking down. Four crotchets I like to do. But something like, um, like we said earlier, Rudolph. There you go, look. So start with a third, one, one, but hold this down for four, one, two, three, four. I don't know about you, but I always fall out of Rudolph. I think the middle of Frosty the Snowman and the middle of Rudolph are, are more or less the same. I can never, ever remember which one I mean. But anyway, there we go. So, great fun, thirds, sixes, and the walk down melody. Now, I'm going to be putting a little later after this live stream on Patreon, a little worksheet that's going to be available to um, uh, all the patrons um, this is going to be for bronze up to platinum level. Okay, so a little Christmas tree. I'm going to expand it out of the silver level just for this occasion. And we're going to put some hints and tips and examples. So that's going to be coming in the next uh, sort of few days. So watch out for that on patreon.com. So to get that, sign up, and that'll be absolutely awesome. Now, 
Um, before we get any older, um, I just need a little sip of the mulled wine. Had some um, fun um, last night. Um, we um, I decided to make um, some chutney. I don't know if any of you are like me, but I, I really like um, chutney. Um, love it with you know cheese and crackers or in a sandwich. And um, in the greenhouse, we had quite a glut of green tomatoes. Those of you, those of you uh, I'm not I'm not a very green fingered person at all. Uh, my dad is very much the gardener in our family, but I can I can sort of maintain a vegetable plot sort of to a degree. Um, anyway, so there was this glut of green tomatoes, so we decided, I decided rather, I thought, you know what, I'm going to make some chutney. So I've got a nice little recipe, so I've got the brown sugar and everything, and um, um, a liter, over a litre of cider vinegar, and I put my head over the, the pot <laughs> and took a breath. God, it took my head off, it was so strong. Anyway, got cooking apples and currants and all this kind of thing and in go these green tomatoes and onions anyway so it said simmer for an hour so I thought well that'll be all right so I came in here to the studio and um <laughs> and um I went in uh, came in here and I, I thought well I better check all the equipment's working and uh, spent about I don't know about 45 minutes in here and then I thought, oh, I'll sit down and have a little play. Surprisingly, people are quite surprised. I do play sometimes in the evenings just for my own fun. And um, I lost another hour. And because I went back into the kitchen and on the stove was this pot <laughs> still bubbling away. Oh, my goodness me. It was like glue. But I tell you, it, it, it simmered down beautifully. So I got it in the kiln, the jars, and while it was hot and they vacuumed up. So four big pots of green tomato chutney to uh, see us over the festive period. Um, well, just before we go on to our next hints and tips topic, folk, uh, who have we got saying hello? We've got uh, Ben saying, I am a happy chappy Tom. Well, that's good to hear, Ben. We wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, Nick's on. Hello, Nick. I need to call Nick, actually, about a visit to the cinema sometime. No paper hat. <laughs> no, sorry, Nick. Budget cuts, I'm afraid. Anyway, but lovely to see Nick and Ben and uh, everybody on here this evening. Thanks for thanks for joining me, folks. Really is a pleasure to spend some time in your company. Now, let's get on to our next topic. We're going to talk about left-hand chords now. Um, and simple ways of improving the chords um, in songs is to add, again, like the harmony on the right hand, an extra note um, over here. So what we're talking about here is... Um, say, for example, you were playing a dreamy kind of song. Uh, what should we go for? Let's go for something nice and slow. Uh, and let's pick, let me find a little style here. Here's one we didn't make earlier. Um, easy listening, that'll do. So, you know, a nice slow swing for this one. And let's say we're going to play Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, something a little bit like this, guys. Okay, now I want you to notice there what I'm doing. I'll just turn the keyboard down a bit as I play. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm wearing headphones, it's so I can monitor the sound as it goes into the streamer and I can also I've got the keyboard speakers turned off so you're just hearing my lapel mic anyway so turn it down a little bit more so um, when we play have yourself a merry little Christmas it goes C A minor F G C ba 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 it's a very simple sequence the old one six two five ba 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 da 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 okay so what we want to do now is we want to improve the way that those chords sound i'm going to put a sound on the left hand just to make the chords a bit more obvious and this is a little vocal there you go look so C, A minor, D minor, G. And of course all those notes are only three notes, aren't they? We know that from um, our playing. C is three notes, A minor is three notes, D minor is three notes, G is three notes. So they're all basic triads, um, is, the, is the technical term. So um, the first thing you can do is to turn the major chords um, into... Um, 
um, well, particularly the C chord, um, turn that into a major seventh. Okay, and to do that, you play a C chord and you add this B note here. Okay, so you play C chord. I'm going to play in the traditional organ inversion, G, C, E, and we then have. Let's move my chair back a bit so we can see um, the B there, okay? And listen to what this does to the C chord. Now you can hear there's a little bit of dissonance. Dissonance is where there's a clash, but... Then add the B, look. Really nice sound there from the, uh, the C major 7. Now, you can write that in, just put major 7 after the C chord. Now when I play A minor, I'm going to add the G in and that turns it into a minor 7th. Okay, so I've got A minor plus G. So again, listen, look, A minor, simple, the 7. You hear that little colour coming in, listen again. A minor, 7. D minor 7, and then of course, G7. Now the thing there is that all those chords had a seven after them but some of but there's three different types of seven chords there you've got major sevens minor sevens and a and another one called a dominant seven now just to reiterate what those are um let's just quickly go just onto the keys a second um so c major look here let's put a, a piano on so let's go, do a bit of theory here so here's c major in what we call root position the c's at the bottom look now, if I play the seventh note of the C scale, I get a B, look, that's C major seven. It's the C major chord plus the seventh of the scale. Ha, huh, that makes sense. If I play A minor, look, A, C, E, again, seven above the bass is G. So that's minor seven, okay? The reason this one's called a major seven is because the C chord is major then plus the seven from the same scale. A minor seven is so called because it comes from a minor scale, minor plus the seventh. Okay, there's the G look. So you've got major sevenths and you've got minor sevenths, okay. The other type is dominant seventh, okay, dominant seventh, and dominant seventh is um, a special term that just means the chord is very strong sounding um, it, dominant means the fifth note, number five. So in the key of C, C, D, E, F, G, the dominant is the fifth. Okay, so that's why the G chord, look at your music, the G chord is always normally followed by a C chord. So G7, again, G chord plus the F, there's the dominant seventh. Okay, so that's how that works. So you can use those in songs like White Christmas, have yourself a merry little Christmas. Um, what's the other one? The Christmas song, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Um, you know, uh, any of your carols. Um, so have a listen to. Um, um, so let's put a little choir on the left hand. Let's put some strings on the left hand. So I'm going to put C major seven in. Look at the beginning of Silent Night. Have a listen to this, everybody. A little colour there, look. D minor seven, G seven, C major seven. Now, F major seven, C major seven. Does that sound lovely? Very nice, isn't it? And a lot of those chords, I'm sure you guys know those. Major seven, if you don't know them, look in your organ books. There's normally a, a chart in there, which is really nice. So, <coughs> excuse me, major sevens, I often think of those as a kind of a, a dreamy sound. The, the carpenters, um, why do birds suddenly appear? Lots of major sevens in there, gives it a kind of a dreamy sound. Um, dominant sevens, nice strong sound, or you can do minor sevens. It's just a simple extra note, makes such a big difference to the sound. Well everybody, I think this has been great fun. I'm having a blast and uh, it's nice to share a little musical knowledge with you guys. And again, if you're enjoying um, what I do, please do hit the subscribe button. It'd be lovely to gate in you as a subscriber. Uh, please do comment on any of the videos. Um, <clears throat> please do um, 
you know, hit the bell. And do check out the website, tomhorton.co.uk, so there's the new theatre organ book. There's actually three piano books on there. If you're looking for a Christmas gift for that musical piano player, um, Pianistic, there's three Pianistic books, all, all lots of um, wonderful new pieces for the piano um, in there. And uh, also I've got some lovely CD albums featuring uh, Yamaha, Lowry organs, um, and also a Wurlitzer well, video as well, uh, um, uh, CD rather, not a video. Right, everybody. So let's finish off now with the last little topic. Well, this will just take us up to about another five or ten minutes of your time. And we're just going to talk about some registrations that might work um, with um, certain pieces of music. And I did a little hints and tips video on this the other day on the two-minute tip. But you've got to think of sounds, in, I think, for Christmas in kind of four categories. Soft, swing, popular, and carols slash traditional. So soft, swing, popular, or carols slash traditionals. So soft ones are things like Silent Night, Wayne the Manger, um, um, which I suppose also come under traditional as well, but, but we'll go with that for the moment. Um, mistletoe and wine, things like that. So things like strings go very well. Okay, so let's go with White Christmas again. Okay, um, we can also put some organ on, so use your organ flutes to add that little soft tone. Maybe with the strings. Um, you could do an orchestral flute, nice soft ballad flute. And maybe a nice tenor saxophone. Ballad tenor or breathy tenor. Not a, not a harsh tenor. It's too heavy, you see. Nice little bit of um, breath at the bottom there. Okay, so there we go. So soft styles, soft, soft those gentle songs, um, strings, organ, a flute, tenor saxophone. Okay, so the next category is swing, so big band rhythms, swing rhythms, and the sounds that you would use with those are the sounds in a big band. So saxophone sections, individual saxophones, clarinets, trumpets, brass, piano, and the number that we opened up with <coughs> was, um, uh, what was it called? Um, <laughs> Don't get old, everybody. You keep forgetting things. What's it called? Um, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. That's it. And, you know, you could do those, uh, you know, things like a muted trumpet. Okay. Saxophone sections. Trumpets. And you can hear because that sounds really realistic because we're using the instruments in the band. So if you're listening, say, to Michael Bublé's album, you'll hear all those instruments. Um, you can also mix um, brass and saxophones together. Those, those go like, you know, peaches and cream, as they say. <laughs> Piano. There we go, so swing. And of course, don't forget, in modern keyboards and organs, we have built-in presets. So on this keyboard, there's actually four settings that, that give you sound suggestions. Um, Versi organs have uh, four style, uh, sound to styles. The Lowry, you get about 10 for each style, so there's loads of settings there 
to enjoy. Um, oh, Michael says, asks, what keyboard are you playing on, please, Tom? Michael, this is a Yamaha PSR keyboard. Um, this, this came from Alan's Music Centre in Great Yarmouth, where, of course, many people know I'm part of the team there. Um, and uh, this is a Yamaha S750. Um, just a, a, It's a nice keyboard, does does what I sort of need it to do for teaching and things. Um, so, um, yeah, I've got the, an organ here in the studio, the piano, so that's uh, quite nice. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, so that's good for the swing stuff. Now, popular stuff could be, like we say, mistletoe and wine, um, um, you know, driving home for Christmas, um, Slade, it's starting to look... Um, oh. Dear, I can't remember the name of the song. So here it is, Merry Christmas. So, you know, you get this kind of um, um, sort of chugging kind of thing. So then you want to get into more um, sort of brighter sounds. So guitars, brass, maybe synthesizers, you know, those kind of um, sort of noises. So something like this maybe. Um, let's get into a little bit of uh, rock and roll kind of stuff in here. Um, he says, knowing the keyboard so well... Um, so um, let's uh, nip into here. So we've got the distorted guitars. So all those big sounds in there, synthesizers, lots of things like that. And for your carols and your traditional numbers, God rest you, merry gentlemen, um, hark the herald angels sing, you know, those traditional ones, you can play those with or without a style. Uh, keyboard's a little difficult, you have to play with a style normally on a keyboard. But let's get like an orchestral march. So the strings, the horns, and I tell you the killer registration for Christmas on those big numbers, if you really want to part hair at 50 paces, is a pipe organ with a choir mixed in. So for example, we could do um, something like this maybe. There's the thirds. So that's French horn with strings. But let's get that big pipe organ on, uh, which is somewhere in here. Uh, pipe organ and a choir. Um, so we could add a big pipe organ. Um, and the choir's right here. So let me get that set right in there. There we go. Now you can get that big sound. big noise now all of that information folks all those hints and tips that's going to be in a bonus pdf available to my patrons so if you want to join them and in get into helping support more things like this on my channel visit patreon.com forward slash um, keyboard skills pro you can also get the link via my website tomhorton.co.uk but um thanks ever so much for watching everybody hope you've enjoyed it i mean i have a great fun nice to do something a little different not just play the music um, plus i've done um, amazingly do you know i've done i think i've done about um i think something like 17 or 18 live streams um since we went into lockdown uh, back in march it's quite remarkable um we're going to be doing um uh, the live streams every two weeks at the moment but throughout the month of december we've got some great hints and tips videos some performances some theater organ stuff all in that christmas theme so we're going to do that going right up to um, the festive time of year and then in the new year we're going to carry on with all lots of videos we've got some more silent film stuff coming uh, we're going to do some more performances and all things like that so hopefully to sort of entertain you guys during lockdown and uh, this uh, difficult time that of course we are going through um, and of course we've had great news of vaccines and things but I, I get the feeling we're probably going to be sort of in limbo for a little while because of course it's going to be as we know time before those roll out and take effect so uh, anyway but it's great that we can be safe and enjoy each other's company so very very nice so thank you everyone for joining me this evening 
can't thank you enough. Um, and as I say, please do hit subscribe. Lovely to get you as a subscriber. And uh, you know, if you if you like any of the videos on my channel, please do put a comment. Um, if you've got something nice to say, <laughs> um, please do give it a thumbs up. Share the video onto a Facebook group, maybe one that I'm not on. You know, all things like that. But thank you to all of you for giving up your time this evening um, to to support me. I really do appreciate it. it uh, They've been hellish lonely without you. Um, but to all of you watching, all my, my students and uh, YouTube friends, and uh, um, it's lovely to have your company, as I say. And uh, let's, uh, let's finish off with uh, something um, a little bit uh, nice and lively to uh, um, take us to the break. Um, and uh, yeah, take care, folks. And we'll see you live on YouTube in a week or two. But uh, as I say, every Tuesday, we've got two minute tips. Wednesday we have live streams once a fortnight and Fridays we have in the evening a tuition video or a performance and the lots of festive stuff during the month of December. So here we go. Well, thanks very much and good night.